the new pope, a new start for the Catholic Church? In the interview, Archbishop of Hamburg, Werner Thyssen. On Wednesday evening, a new pope took over the helm of the Catholic Church. Tell me how you experienced that moment. I was very taken aback when I heard who the new pope was. I was surprised, but I'm absolutely delighted. The world followed the media coverage. In Germany, as many people watch it on TV as the World Cup. Incredible figures. But most people don't know what to think of the papacy. That's despite eight years of Benedict, the German pope. What is the pope's role today? The papst is... The Pope is responsible for setting church guidelines, as they're laid out in the New Testament and according to ecclesiastical tradition. Hence, he has enormous influence. For the first time in a thousand years, the Pope is not a European. Europe has always laid claim to the papacy. What does the move from Europe to Latin America mean? dass das Papstamt weggeht von Europa nach Lateinamerika. Ja, da gibt's ja eine enorme Entwicklung, wenn man so die letzten There's been enormous change even in the last few decades. It used to be an Italian post. Then with Benedict it became a European one and now it's gone to the third world. That's an enormous development for the church and a very good one. After all, we don't want to be an Italian or a German church. We should be and must be a global church, so it's a very welcome development. You travel widely in Latin America. You're responsible for the German Catholic Bishops' Branch of the Miseri or Charity. What are your impressions of Catholics in Latin America? It's a different kind of piousness. They don't strictly observe everything in the liturgy. They're singing, laughing and dancing. I've always enjoyed being swept up by that. The relationships between people are also less complicated than here. Do you think a Pope from Latin America would transport that worldwide? Here in Germany, we'll be turning increasingly to South America for everything we want to ask, search for and experience. And that change in spiritual orientation won't just be down to the Pope, I'm sure of that. I already had that impression when I was there with my colleagues from Miserior. When we arrived back in Germany, we celebrated the first few Masses in a different way. Did you meet Bergoglio, then a Cardinal, now the Pope, during your charity work? The Miserio files show the present Pope gave his consent to many projects in his diocese. He said they have to do these things. They include, for example, housing projects for the unemployed, job creation measures, training for young people. There's a lot going on. Here in Germany and in Europe, we know that Latin America has more than 400 million Catholics. But there's also been a growing sense that people are flocking to Protestant churches and that the Catholic Church there is under pressure. What's your take? I think the Church of Jesus Christ is always under pressure because there will always be opposing views as well as resistance. It's certainly true that the Catholic Church in Latin America doesn't have it easy. However, in the past decades, there have been strong catechetical as well as social upheavals there. So I think we'll make progress there too. On Wednesday evening, Pope Francis stood on the balcony of St. Peter's Cathedral, clothed in white. Shortly afterwards, we heard he'd been given the name Cardinal of the Poor. What does that mean to the wealthy German church? 
für eine Kirche in Deutschland, die tendenziell eine reiche Kirche ist? Wir müssen auch in Deutschland und wollen auch in Deutschland Kirche an der in Seite Germany, der Armen sein. In Deutschland wollen wir auch eine Kirche für die Armen sein. Das ist unser Hilfswerk Miserio Charity. Das ist warum wir die Charity seit über 50 Jahren haben, die über 50 Jahre ist. Und ich verspreche mir, dass der neue Pope in der Zukunft sorgt, dass diese Sorgen für die Armen sein werden, 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 dass die noch mehr bei uns in die Köpfe und Herzen kommt. That's crucial, because the issue of inequality, the unequal distribution of wealth, is crying out to be addressed, and we must respond. One U.S. Cardinal said the new Pope won't just push for donations to the poor, but to share life with the poor. They say he rides the subway in Buenos Aires and distances himself from wealth. Should this be seen as demand on the wealthy church here? Yes, that's certainly something being asked of us, and the Pope will strengthen those demands. But at the end of the day, it's also a basic requirement of the Gospels that we consider our way of life. It's clear that today's lifestyles, in Europe and elsewhere in the northern part of the world, are destroying the earth and harming the poor. What does exactly that mean for the wealthy church? It means that we need to work even harder to share what we have with those with less. Does that mean finding new members for the German Catholic Church? which is losing up to 200,000 people every year? Yes, a church which doesn't stand by the poor is not credible in the long term. For us, as a church with quite a lot of money compared to those in other countries, that means sharing. We do that already, but not enough. And the Pope, I'm sure of it, will motivate us to do more. Over the past eight years, it seemed the German Church, with all of its problems and challenges, has been in the spotlight because of Pope Benedict. One example was the term unworldliness. That debate flared the last time the Pope was in Germany, in September 2011. Is it an advantage for the German Catholic Church not to have the world's attention? I don't know whether much will change. There was attention on the German Church before Benedict too. But I think the focus will be wider now. People will look towards South America. But we should allow ourselves to be criticized, to see whether we're living our lives according to the gospel and how we can improve. That means keeping the world in view, and especially the poor. Suppose German bishops discussed at their next meeting what they could do differently under Pope Francis. What might they decide? Is there anything specific you can say in regards to caring more for the poor? Yes, we could discuss at the bishops' conference whether the substantial funds the German church already directs towards development projects are adequate. We also need to ask ourselves whether we're encouraging enough young people to take part in cooperation projects. In Hamburg, we have so-called exposure projects. We travel with a select group of young people to the Southern Hemisphere so that they can see how poor people live there. This has an enormous effect. They suddenly notice that much of what we have here is unnecessary. The people there don't have those things. And sometimes they're actually happier than we are.
The young people you mention often call for reforms within the German Catholic Church regarding celibacy or the greater involvement of members. Some have concerns about the Church's stance on particular lifestyles, like unmarried couples or homosexuals. Will that be different now that the Pope isn't German? I don't know how the Pope will handle those issues, but we'll realize that those problems you've just mentioned are not global issues of utmost importance. Our priority must be fairness. It's unjust that so many people are living below the poverty line. It's unjust that so many people are dependent on others. Things need to change in that regard, and I hope and expect that the Pope will tackle those issues. This move to Latin America also signals a departure from Europe. Critics say the Catholic Church is booming in Asia, Africa and Latin America, while in Europe the number of believers is falling. What does this mean for Europe, for its intellectual history, its contribution to globalization, its claims, values and so on? What does it mean for Europe that the Catholic Church is losing influence? We won't be bidding farewell to the Catholic Church in Europe. My archdiocese and the other 26 dioceses are vibrant faith communities. So there's a lot there in the way of belief, hope and love. But the Church won't develop according to European standards. For centuries, we've sent European missionaries to other continents. Now, other continents are inspiring us and revitalizing our faith. I think that's a positive development. Archbishop, thank you very much.